So guys, here I have with me is the uh, Nissan X-Trail with the Impal body kit. Uh, first of all, it looks handsome, okay? It looks very handsome. The, the X-Trail has always been a very good looking car. I mean, not the previous two generations. They drastically changed the design direction of this generation. So you have all the flowing lines and they look very cohesive, okay? And I like the front of this Nissan design language. But apparently they haven't been aggressively adapting this design language to their current models. Look at the US Nissan Tiena, they've thoroughly updated the car with the front, the new front end. But somehow in Asia it's not been updated at all. But I like I like this front, you know, this this really nice chunky design, that big Nissan logo, and then the headlamps that sort of bulges out. It's like 3D, you know, across the board. And then this body kit just makes the car look more aggressive, more sporty. And those are some rims that look actually they look really really aftermarket but then uh yeah it's impal fitted with continental mc5 these are uhp tires huh? i'm quite amazed that they put uhp tires on uh what if what is essentially an suv okay so the x2 competes with the crv the cx5 and last year 2016 this is the best selling suv in this segment okay so it outsold the crv it outsold the cx5 and of course this is like the the main bread and butter of nissan malaysia now because the tiena it loses out to the accord loses out to the camry and all that and then um they don't have a i mean the silphi just somehow they they did not market the silphi strongly so the silphi sort of like disappeared um compared to its previous ones they, they, it doesn't sell as well okay and of course the elmera now occupies a different price point it's it's about 60 over thousand it, it doesn't compete with the vios or the city anymore so this is the extreme all right it's quite big though it's quite big why because it's a seven seater so uh let me pop open the boot okay so the seats you can see that it's folded in there flat uh, i'm not going to fold them out now because to me they are five plus two this is a fly five plus two seating car okay what that's mean what that means is that the two rear seats right is more suitable for children rather than adults but think about it this way when the seats are folded flat right it behaves just like any suvs now and when you open the boot, when you pull open the trunk, it's spacious. I mean, it might not be as spacious as the CRV. The CRV is really huge in here, but it's comparable to the CS5. Okay, so it's a totally usable boot, and then you have some storage area, and you can also store the uh, tonneau cover. The tonneau cover can be fitted inside here, which is very good. A lot of cars, when you remove the tonneau cover, you don't even know where to put them. All right, the seatbelts are mounted here. And then um, there are some cup holders at the back here. And yeah, it's, it's not a, a very, very spacious boot, but then it, it is versatile in a way that you can put things or you can ferry people, which is a very, very good um, transition between uh, utility and passenger carrying practicality. Okay, so that's the boot. A no power boot here. So there's a... Uh, reverse camera over there okay inside here that is my driving position and i'm sorry because i'm not wearing my shoes today so you can see the knee room that i have yeah very a, a lot of knee room and i can slot my feet underneath okay and uh, there are rear aircon vents but these type of plastics is really they should be they should be you know retired now these are the type of plastics where easily they will leave scratch marks there but it's mounted high enough high enough you know some are mounted really low so it's all right but, okay of course my favorite would be b pillar mounted aircon vents which this doesn't um proper pocket here these are pvcs uh I think it's partial there's some some part are leather some part are man-made like pvc and all that okay let's come to the uh oh is there an armrest okay there's no armrest this is quite unique for this segment to not have armrest okay let me pull this and see sorry one-handed operation okay i have to pull that and drop this then it becomes an armrest okay 
with a, well, which is alright. Now it's an armrest, but this is plastic. It's not leather clad and there's two lubang here as cup holders. Um, isofix all around. Okay. I bet isofix in front. Um, nope. Okay, so there are two sets of isofix seats at the back. And it's spacious inside here. As for headroom, very decent headroom. Of course, I hope it has panoramic roof, but then they don't. Huh? The door bins, the door bins are really tight. Uh, like a lot of cars in this segment, right? They tapered down so that this, this part is really short. So the door bins can only put like a small bottle or some belongings there. Overall, the cabin ambience, right, is still very early 2000s Japanese, you know, it feels very Japanese. Some thick carbon fibres here, and then this this type of chrome handles, which are very lightweight, they don't feel metal at all. And then this, all these plastic panels, they look very early 2000s kind of Japanese car. Everything is just black, dark, you know. And um, unlike its competition, which has, uh, they, they make very fancy looking cars now. How do I drop? Is that the max? Cannot be right. It must be me not knowing how to operate it, I believe. Okay, now it's fully folded. Okay, so it can be folded flat. So, very functional. You can carry a lot of things. Once all these are folded flat, you can keep the tonneau cover inside there, then it's super spacious. But from here, to the ceiling it's not as high as you thought okay because if, if it's honda they would have done something like you know this one full full up and all that but all right to me as long as the second row can be folded flat and then the uh, third row can be fully hidden flat is good enough let's come in here and go through the door panels first i like this handle i've always liked it but somehow the uh the material use is like I said again. Even though this is leather clad, right? And then uh, all these molding points are okay, but they don't feel like the modern Japanese cars that a lot of them has massively upgraded their interior quality. This one really feels familiar with cars from the 2002-2003 era. Okay. As for the center dash, the these things look nah, these these part they look pretty modern. Okay, the car has keyless entry. And then push start and then the very familiar Japanese car feel okay so Japanese cars are like this they have always been like this right they don't use a lot of fancy materials but they last okay these are all soft touch plastics but you kind of feel that the whole dash you can sort of lightly push it around not like a Volkswagen which is like dead solid right look at the, the center console okay, do you see it it sort of moves a little bit as you push on it so in terms of fit and finish i would say this is about that of a renault of which they are a fa they are a family okay see this part you can you can let air con air conditioning air flow out here so it sort of cools this area so a nice touch okay this one is to lock the differentials you can go two-wheel drive automatic or four-wheel drive so um, one of the rare ones where you know a lot of people will be buying the four-wheel drive version okay so and then you have this infotainment screen which is very easy to use I would say but of course the uh, the interface doesn't look very uh, I would say intuitive but then it's, it's all right it's, it's perfectly okay yeah, very low re low res camera at the back there the screen is not low res the screen isn't the most high res either but uh, how come I can't go back how do I go back? Bro uh, Bro I didn't go reverse Can I go back? Please Okay, I'm back I have no idea because I'm pressing display but It toggles between The camera and this? Really? Really? There's no camera button? If I go navigation What will happen? Warning This looks like a Microsoft tile <laughs> Right, you have your music, it's touchscreen enabled. And, uh, and then there's another interface for the maps, which is alright. Tanchong, you know. Is there a back button? Nope, no back button. So you have to go back to the menu and then you press the display to operate the cameras. 
okay so it is one of the rare ones where it has a 360 camera but these are really early generation type look at the uh, the renditions are not that uh, superb I would say okay uh, dual zone climate control here a CVT transmission here and then uh, uh, this is nice to hold your pen and then this is quite spacious but then it's not covered in carpet or you know felt or anything so if you have stuffs inside they're gonna make some sound when your car moves around all right USB port is over here and then you have the uh, 12 volt and then the auxiliary here there's another 12 volt inside here uh, this is hill descent control operate it when you're going re down really steep hill uh, reasonably large enough and nope no more cubby spaces that's it that's it okay that's to adjust your luminosity for the uh, speedo and then you have a multi-information display where you can toggle between different different stuffs okay so that's about it the biggest news about the X-Trail is that somehow it's two airbags only across the range you know it's just two airbags there are no side airbags there are no curtain airbags um, even though none of us wanted to use our airbags right and honestly speaking uh, if, you, if you drive carefully it's not something that you want to use but in this time and age uh, people are kind of expecting uh, a company like Nissan to put in full airbags across their range because especially when they market the, the Silphi, the Nissan Silphi which is about 118,000 or 120,000 they market it as the car with full six airbags across the range but somehow when you move up the ranks to 160 over 1000 this car doesn't come with full airbags and this is a family car so I would say curtain airbags is something that you shouldn't be omitting nowadays maybe they have some ordering issues that they just can't order the, the full 6 airbag version I have no idea okay but basically you can't alright there's no pedal shifters here so uh, these are just very basic you know the cruise control here and then to operate that thing and volume controls and then to pick up your phone and you know cut it off Yep, that's about it. Let's go for a drive. Okay, first off, you won't feel very happy doing full accelerations in this car because it's gonna make a lot of noise and not a lot of progress because it's a, even though it's a 2.5 liter engine with about 161 horsepower or 171 PS uh, the mating to a CVT gearbox means that it is designed for frugal driving, for slow city traffic, traffic jams, or uh, usual residential housing cruising, okay? Um, it is not really meant for um, performance driving, that's not the point of this car. Not that it can do even, it, it just can't because of the transmission, all right? Is it a slow poke car? No, it's not, but it's not a car that you enjoy a lot driving very fast, okay? First of all, um, soundproofing is very Japanese cars. Remember back then in the uh, early 2000s, if you buy an Accord or a Camry and all that, you sort of ex expect and you accept these kind of uh, overall Japanese car ambience. This car sort of uh, amplifies the kind of Japanese car driving feeling that you get, you know, where if you put it into a corner, it's going to roll a bit. And if you accelerate, it's going to have moderate performance everything is moderate you know you use your legs to push the center the center tunnel you, you feel the whole center tunnel moving a little bit like that so it's very Japanese um, very early 2000s Japanese you know the car will last there isn't anything really fancy in here they don't use some exotic materials but you know it will last all right it has a steering that 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 is not very fearsome. It doesn't give you any sort of information, but it's it's the kind of car that normal people hop on and then they just drive. They don't feel like it's super high tech. There's something they need to learn, or it uh, intimidates them in any way. It doesn't at all. Okay, you just come up here and then you just drive. 
right? You don't you don't corner hard, you don't do all that stuff. You just drive like a normal car has to be driven, okay? It has a lot of room inside here. Bank for bug wise, it is not very expensive. 177,000 ish. And then it is a seven seater. It is a five plus two, but the two seats that is fully flat folded at the back there uh, is an added benefit when you need to carry seven person, you just flip it up. This is the sole reason why this car was the best selling SUV in this segment. You know, it outsold the CRV, it outsold the CX5, it outsold the Tucson, the Sportage, all of them because. It is rather good looking. I mean, I have to be honest with it. It's a very handsome SUV. Okay, it's good looking. It's pretty even. Okay, and then it has nice flowing lines, really good proportions. And then there are two seats fully flat folded at the back there that you can pop it up just in case when you need it to be. And this is the reason why this car sells so well. People want that added uh, functionality, that added uh, practicality to go with this car okay and I mentioned it was spacious it's very spacious here part of it is because it has a small steering wheel relative to the size of the car so it's nice and handy and I have a lot of headroom even from outside it doesn't look like a bulging SUV but I have a lot of headroom I like the armrest that is mounted slightly higher so I can rest my my forearm here I can hold my steering wheel here and I can slot my palm here on long distance drives does it feel luxurious? Not at all. Nothing here feels luxurious, even though it's soft touch, you know? The plastics here are soft touch. I don't see any welding points, or no welding pula. The molding points that cut my hand, but it feels very Japanese, plasticky, but you know, it's sort of well fitted and it will last long, okay? And that's about it for the front cabin. Are there a lot of uh, compartments? Not a lot. You have one here, cup motors here, here and there. That's it. And then the door bins. There's not a lot of clever cup motors and all that. And then the steering wheel. The steering wheel is dead. The steering wheel is like, you know, I can move it to the left and then I go straight. It won't, it won't point back to the straight. It won't, point, it won't immediately pull back to the straight. It will just lay there dead, you know. That's the kind of steering feel you get, which is none. No steering feel at all. And um, what else? These are very user friendly, but I think this is an upgrade. I might be wrong, but it could be an upgrade. You know, you need to pay extra to get this, uh, what is seven inch or eight inch touchscreen. It looks like the uh, Microsoft Windows tile thingy, but I'm, I don't think it runs on Windows. I think it runs on Android again. Okay. And then it has a 360 display camera. But what is amazing is that, you know, at times when you go to some narrow roads, okay, I know when you go reverse, it will activate the camera, okay? Or when your car is stationary, you press display and then it will show the 360 camera with the wide angle reverse camera. It will show both, which is really good. But somehow, I don't know why they do this. The moment you go into drive, it shuts off the screen, which to me doesn't make sense, but to me as well, it's just a software update away. It's very simple to to get around this, all right? Uh, there are dual zone climate controls. They feel very cold. It's mounted high up here. So it's very easy to get the air traveling to the back. And then you have a second row aircon vent. That's it, there is no third row aircon vent. But the second row aircon vent is mounted really low here. Uh, you know where if you watch my videos often I always sit there and then I say the aircon blows at my balls and nothing else So this one sort of does that as well, but it's mounted slightly higher So it's okay, but no air from the second row aircon vent can ever reach the third row so much like the uh, Mitsubishi Outlander The Mitsubishi Outlander the aircon vents have to rely on the front pushing to the back, the rear most of the car. But at least this one is facing the rear. Oh, there's an Outlander there. Not like the Outlander, there is an aircon vent that is angled towards the driver, another one angled towards the driver, and two of the aircon vents is point straight at the passenger. So there are no direct aircon vents to direct air all the way to the back. So that's the Outlander, okay? And uh, as for this car, 
all I'm hearing is I hear a lot of wind noise, I hear quite a bit of engine noise and on top of that it's a CVT so there's the transmission noise as well and the road roar not very loud in terms of road roar is okay all right so uh, it has automatic wipers automatic uh, headlamps and spec count I think is decent but again it only has two airbags not that something you want to use but I think a side curtain airbag will be really helpful nowadays all right so overall the driving experience is pretty decent uh, it has a 2.5 liter engine but of course I hope it is mated with some other transmission other than Xtronic because the Xtronic transmission is um, it behaves like how a CVT transmission should be which makes anyone who is in a rush uh, won't, doesn't really appreciate how it sounds or feel if you're in a rush all right because all it does is hey, and then the speed of the car just slowly goes up while the revs are super high okay that's how it is and if you drive like this frugally if you drive like a normal human being like that every day then the car is very fuel efficient all right but if you are a very heavy footed person say for example you stay in Satya Alam and then you work in PJ or uh, KL you need that means you need to travel on highway daily and on fast moving traffic you will find this car and you are a very heavy step you know you are a heavy footer on petrol on the accelerator then you will find that this car actually consumes quite a little bit of fuel all right because of the nature of CVTs maintaining at high revs to slowly build the car up, up to speed and uh, when it comes to the suspension on, on normal roads it drives okay but on those uh, speed breakers you know those the kind where they painted red color or yellow color it's quite prominent it sends into the cabin but overall if you're driving like that it feels very comfortable the seats are comfortable it's large enough there is a lot of room in here visibility is excellent um, I don't find any significant blind spots uh, around the car and uh, everything else is just within reach very easy to operate that's how it is all right um, why people buy something like this instead of a seven-seater like a Serena and all that uh, you think about it this way if you drive an MPV say for example a, a Nissan Serena hy hybrid or a Mazda Viante or uh, a Velfire or Innova and all that right you are telling people that your life no longer has adventures okay you no longer have your own personal lifestyle moments everything you do is just for the kids for the family for uh... yeah it's like there's there's nothing lifestyle about it but when you buy a car like this yes you have two smaller rear seats at the back that could be of use when you have you know additional passengers but how the car looks how the car feels gives you an impression that this is a car that fits your lifestyle oh that's an outlander <laughs> just mentioned about it yeah oh it was there just now so cars like these the outlander and this one they look like suvs all right they look like you still have life in you you, you will still go for adventures you will put your bike in it someday you may put a uh, a travel box on top and then go do something and then you have the additional benefit of having two extra seats at the back there so that's how they feel that's why people like to go for cars like these instead of the uh, Serena S hybrid in front where that just looks so utilitarian when it comes to fetching ferrying people and that's about it okay those cars don't feel like you want to go for a bike trip or a uh, canoeing outing and all that none of that but this car it conveys that feeling and then it has a four-wheel drive system that is able to lock lock it up uh, there's low mode I'm not sure there's an intelligent mode not, not low but overall it's okay that's okay how this car competes with its establishment I would say the Kia Sportage out handles this car the Hyundai Tucson outhandles this car, the CX-5 outhandles this car, the previous CRV doesn't outhandle this car, that car is equally 
not as good when it comes to handling but the new one definitely out handles this car all of them does but but okay only this car comes with seven seater seats yes the outlander comes with it the outlander has some big flaws with the car which is related to the dashboard okay where uh really the air doesn't really travel all the way to the back to the third row passenger at all and then uh, the infotainment screen doesn't look as interesting as this one and then that one has a CVT transmission as well in terms of interior build it's sort of about the same as this car and I think this car looks better this car looks more modern looks more um, easy on the eyes whereas the Outlander has a very handsome look it is very uh, masculine all right but you have to appreciate that kind of chunky design to like that car this one on the first go you look at it you know it's a good looking car it's well proportioned very good looking design okay so uh, there are only two cars in this segment that uh, sort of carries seven person and is a mid-size SUV as well and um, yeah this one sort of looks better but this one only has two airbags the Outlander has seven if I'm not wrong and uh, that one has a power boot this one doesn't and uh, so yeah if you need a seven-seater car you don't have that big a budget you 150 or 170 thousand and then you don't want a car to be too big the only choice for a seven-seater car like these is this one and the uh, Mitsubishi Outlander yeah and this one has a sister car, the Renault Colios, but somehow the Colios handles way better than this car. The handling is a lot better. Uh, it's a more, lot more composed when it comes to the suspension and the turn in and the steering feel and all that. This one is not half bad. Okay, on, 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 on roads like this, when you're going like 20, 30, immediate response. When you step on the throttle, it goes immediate. Uh -huh. It goes immediately, all right. But it's just on the highway when you go full rev, you really have to wait for the rev, the, the speed of the car to catch up to the revolution of the engine is pulling, all right. So uh, yeah, that's how this car is. This is the Nissan X Trail. Now it's fitted with Impal body kit. It looks really good to me. It's a comfortable car, very spacious, very practical. If you don't look at all the extra bits, and if you are not someone who drives, who is not. If you're someone who is not a driving enthusiast, you can't even differentiate whether a uh, CX-5 drives better or this one, then this car might be for you. But to me, the steering that doesn't really unwind itself after you turn, and then um, some of the other aspects of this car sort of put it in the middle ground for me. Okay, I, I wouldn't call it um, super class destroying, but... I would say that this car has its space because of the two seats at the back. If it weren't for the two seats at the back, right, uh, this car won't be as uh, devastatingly appealing as it is. Even though, okay, I'm in drive now, right? Okay. It allows me to look at it for a little bit, but then, uh, okay, I was wrong, okay? So, that very tight roads I can actually activate this to have a look at, at it so when you're on tight roads you can activate the 360 camera and then you can judge your way around using the camera which is pretty nifty I would say and then you go reverse it shows the rear and then the 360 if you go to the front there is another frontal cam as well you can see the front this is very good I like I mean not many cars have a frontal camera but this one has it uh, but is it very high res? not exactly what about the screen is it very high res? not exactly either but it's a good addition to the car so yeah you want to carry anything it can carry you want to carry more than five person it can do that and it has a 360 cam it's foot operated brake and then the car is very decent it's good looking and it's not super expensive um, is it class leading no no but it has its niche that that's why people buy it yep all right that's the nissan x trail with Impel body kit, 160-ish to 170,000. All right? Subscribe. Why you don't subscribe? Please? Please subscribe. <laughs> Bye.